Welcome to create an online course that sells from yours truly. Right now we're in the overview and introduction section. We're only going to be here for about five minutes, just setting proper expectations of what you'll learn. And then we're going to dive into the first step of creating an online course. Then we're going to get into the nitty gritty of how to actually create your course, how to build it out. How do you set the price? What tech do you use? Does it have to be tech heavy? All the things that you need to know to actually create the course and then how to have a successful course launch. So now that your course is created, how can you actually make sales from it? So we're going to give three ways to guarantee sales. And then the last part of our time together will be Q and a, and then I do want to be fully transparent. I'm not selling you anything at the end of this webinar. I know sometimes we go to webinars and then at the very end, it's like, oh, they're selling me their course. I'm not selling you anything because I wanted to create a free training. And because this is free, I did accept a sponsor where one minute of our class today, I'm going to tell you about Thinkific, which is the platform I use to host my course. So basically, instead of asking you to sign up for any of my courses, Thinkific paid me to have like a one minute section in this course. First step of creating an online course is to pick a profitable course topic. Keyword here is profitable. Before you even start creating your online course or content for the course idea that you have, really you need to make sure that it's going to be profitable. Just because you pick a topic or you have something in mind, that doesn't necessarily mean your audience is going to buy it or anyone will buy it. So how can you ensure that the idea you have for a course will actually sell? There's three kind of things that go into picking a profitable course topic. The first thing is a niche specific transformational result. The next is you want to pick a course topic that establishes what you want to be known for and course topic that's been validated by your audience. With all three of these things, where they overlap, that's where you'll get your profitable topic. Hopefully this is making sense so far. I want to talk about each of these three things individually for further explanation and understanding. So we all hear this word niche, niche, however you want to say it. The reason we hear this all the time is because it like legit works. So when you hear, oh, how do I grow on Instagram? Oh, you need a niche down. How do you grow on YouTube? You need a niche down. Same thing with a course. How do you create a course that sells? Niching down and not just the topic, but the transformation that your course offers can also be really niche specific. So what's the specific result or outcome that someone will have by taking your course? And some people when you're right now, maybe you're like, okay, well, my course idea, there's no transformation. That's okay. Your course can teach a transformation. It could teach a skill that maybe you've mastered. You're really good at other people want to learn the skill. Maybe it teaches a problem you've solved or a quicker or more efficient way to do something. Maybe it teaches an obstacle you've overcome. Whatever that thing is that you're teaching, we just want the outcome to be really specific. So it targets the right person. An example, when I ask people like, okay, well, what do you want your Instagram to be about? What do you want your course to be about? A common mistake that I hear is people just like, they have very broad answers. They're like, I want to teach people how to have a better life. I want to teach people or I want to inspire people to follow their dreams. I want people to be happy. And it's like, Okay, that's great. Love that for you. But let's get a little more specific. Who are you trying to reach? What specifically are you teaching? How will they be able to do that? Right? When you're able to specify even more, a good example of this would be instead of how to have a better life, how to access the mindset that will allow you to reach an ultimate level of happiness. It's not just like how to have a better life. It's like, okay, what does better life mean to you? Maybe to you that just means finding happiness in the day to day. So it's like, okay, the result is an ultimate level of happiness. How do they do that? Through mindset shifts. So you're able to categorize this topic idea into a mindset based course where the results that they'll see is mindset shifts, allowing them to live a happier life. Do you see that? How it gets a little bit more specific? Let's do one more. Um, how to understand social media. That's kind of really broad. So if you're like, here's a course for how to understand social media, it's like, okay, but like, why? 
wait, what, who, you know? So instead <laughs> of being really broad saying how to understand social media, the topic is going to be social media strategies for businesses. So you can grow online and reach new customers. That is way more specific. It talks about the outcome. You notice it touches on who it's for, which is businesses, what they're going to learn, social media strategies, and the result they will see. Grow online and reach new customers. If you can craft a sentence that targets the who, what, and the transformation, you have a really great start for your course topic. Now you wanna make sure your course topic also establishes authority. So the importance of this is you allow yourself to wonder and answer the questions, what do you wanna be known for? Do you even want to be known for teaching that thing? And can you see yourself teaching and talking about this topic for the next few years? So where do you want to be in five years? Okay, I want to be making online course sales. Okay, what are you known for that's generating those course sales? Oh, I want to be a social media expert. Perfect. Create a course that's on social media. So ask yourself, what do you want to be known for? And then how can you make money by being known by that thing? An example, using myself, I'm an online educator, social media coach. That's what I want to be known for. It wouldn't really make much sense for me to put out a course on how to make gingerbread cookies, <laughs> right? Like I love baking. It's a personal passion of mine, like guilty pleasure. I worked at a cakery. Like I love baking, but that doesn't go in hand with my business goals. It's like a personal thing. We need to separate that personal and business sometimes. And yeah, I love to bake personally, but launching a course on how to make gingerbread cookies just doesn't make much sense for what I want to be known for. I mean, maybe you got y'all would like a gingerbread cookie course, but I don't know. I'm thinking it might make more sense to be more like social media relevant. You know what I mean? So that's kind of an example of why it's important to establish authority with your course topic. Now we want to validate your course topic. Basically by validating your course topic, you're asking is the transformation your course offers or the result that your course offers something that people are actively searching for? Is it a result that people actually want? And this is literally the key to making sure your course will sell. Because if you don't validate your topic first, you could have a course launch that flops because you didn't confirm people are interested in this, people will buy this topic, all the things. So validating your course topic is so important before you even start creating. To validate your course topic, you can do a simple search on search engines, look up your niche or niche, the topic your course is going to be about, See if people are currently looking for answers about that specific thing. Are people creating content answering questions about that? Even if you're looking at other people who have a course similar to yours, that's a good thing. So it's actually not bad if you see like, oh my gosh, there's a bunch of Instagram courses out there. That doesn't mean, oh no, it's oversaturated. I can't do that. That means that must be a successful market. These people have already validated this topic. They know it performs well. It's making them money. I can create an Instagram course too, my own way and see success. So competition's not bad actually. Other ways to validate your course topic, ask yourself, hey, what are people currently asking me? Uh, you can talk to your audience, ask them questions like, hey, what are your pain points? What are you struggling with? What are you dealing with right now? What's a transformation that you wish you could see in the next six weeks? So get on calls with your audience and ask them that. Or if your audience already follows you, you could pull them on your Instagram stories saying, if I taught a class, what would you want me to teach a class on? Which topics are you more interested in? This, this, or this? Pulling your audience and talking to your audience is a great way to get feedback and validate your course topic. You could also offer free coaching to test your methods and make sure that it's working and getting results. And again, market research, look at other people in your industry. What are they teaching on? What are they selling? And are they selling something similar to what you wanna sell? If so, that could be validation that, hey, people are seeking this out and they want results on this. So we've already talked about my course and like it's like a big 10 module 
big transformation. Maybe somebody doesn't know anything about Instagram. And by the end of the course, they know Instagram, they know how to work with the algorithm. They know how to create consistent content. They know how to land brand deals, make money, blah, blah, blah. So that's a huge transformation, but maybe that's not something that you're thinking about. You're like, Oh, that's not really what I want to teach. And that's okay. Maybe there's a specific tool that you know and understand really well. And you could teach somebody how to use that tool. This is Thomas. He has a course that teaches notion. If you don't know what Notion is, it's basically like a organization tool for creators, businesses, entrepreneurs, and it's, it's really cool. I love Notion and he has a course that just teaches how to use that tool. And now if you're somebody, you're like, okay, Millie, I'm, I'm not in like the business industry. That's okay. You can still sell a course. So this is a course learn to draw daily practices to improve your drawing skills. So that's a skill that you've mastered. Maybe you're really good at drawing. You can teach people how to draw. What daily steps do they need to take to get better at drawing? This one's my favorite. <laughs> I use this example a lot in my YouTube videos, but this is David Henry. He has a course or yeah, he has a course called Christmas Lighting Academy and it teaches you how to set up a Christmas light display where it's like dancing to the music on a radio you know when the lights dance when you drive by a, a house and it's like you tune into a radio and it's like in sync with the music he teaches that i've been wanting to do that for so long and when i was we just we're in a house now so i was like oh how do i do that i was looking up how to do christmas light displays he has a course on it and i thought that was so cool so that's an option too and then we also have denira denira is she has a course called fail proof caramel apples. So she does gourmet caramel apples and teaches people how they could do it from home themselves for parties, events, how to brag and look cool to your friends, you know, but teaching you from your own home, how you can make a caramel apple and make it perfection. So this is just a few examples of course topics with specific transformations where the seek and the result has already been validated and is actually needed by a pretty large group of people. So now we have the first step done, which is picking your course topic. I uh, want to talk about building out your online course. What goes into that? We have a lot of things that go into that. You have like how to actually create the course. What does it look like? The structure? How do you build it out? What tools do you need? What does the tech look like? How do you set the proper pricing for your course? All of the things. Let's talk about all of that right now. Creating your online course. You will likely create three versions of your online course over time. You don't have to do this right away. This is something that happens naturally over time, but it's also a great strategy if you're somebody who's overwhelmed with the idea of creating a course, this is the perfect process to follow to help ease that overwhelm or stress. So when I'm explaining each of these, I'm going to explain what it is and how I implemented it within my business. So first we're going to talk about the examples of how I implemented it. And then after that, we'll talk about how you can implement those things. So I wanted to make sure you had examples of how to implement before trying to apply it to your own thing. Starting with the MVP, MVP stands for minimum viable product. This is the release of a new product that is used to validate customer needs and demands prior to developing a more fully featured product. So this is like the bare minimum product where like low effort, low tech, low friction before you fully flesh out your course and create, spend like a hundred hours trying to create this perfect online course, you start with MVP. An example of what that is, is through my MVP journey. I didn't start with the modern influencer. I just didn't have that course. I didn't start with creating the course. I started with an eight week Instagram transformation coaching call. So I accepted 10 spots. So 10 people signed up for an eight week coaching program where every week we would get together and I would teach them how to grow on Instagram, starting with the basics, getting more advanced, and then brand collaborations. This was my low ticket offer and low tech offer. I didn't do slideshows. I didn't do anything. It was just like week one, let's talk about this. Let's hear your questions. Let me answer them. Very casual. I did this 
two times from October through November and then November, December. There was some overlap with the two different groups. This was really great because I was able to get live feedback from my target audience and they could ask questions and they would kind of guide me through, okay, what should next week look like? How fast are they able to implement this? How slowly are we working through this one thing? What questions are they asking? How can I make it better for the next group of students? So I really liked this method. I accepted applications through Google Forms, so it's free. Basically, anybody who wanted to join my coaching, they would apply and I would get on a Zoom call with them to make sure they were a good fit before I accepted any payment from them because I didn't want to waste their time or money and I didn't want to feel like they were like gypped out or anything. I don't know. So I just wanted to make sure they were a good fit before they paid anything. Coaching calls we did on Zoom. Payment processing I did through PayPal. And then I backed up all the Zoom recordings onto Google Drive so that all the students could watch the replays, even if they couldn't join live. So that was my first version of the Modern Influencer. It didn't cost me anything. I didn't use any tools that cost anything. It was completely free to launch and I got paid to do it. Once my MVP was done and I was like, okay, this is a validated course topic. I'm seeing results with my students. Let's move on to create my MMP. Your MMP is the next step, and that is your minimum marketable product. Your minimum marketable product is a more developed version of the MVP that is ready to be sold to customers. So you kind of start to package everything together in a course format where it's ready to be sold. It's a little bit more developed. It's not maybe at where you want it to be long term. It's not that like, wow, this is the dream. Maybe it's not there yet, but it's kind of that transition phase to that. My MMP journey, my first version of the Modern Influencer that I launched had seven modules of pre-recorded videos. It was my mid ticket item. So I went from a low ticket to a mid ticket where anybody who joined at this, it was $5.97 to join the course. Anybody who joined at $5.97 price, they would have lifetime access to any and all future courses updates, no matter how advanced and crazy it got. So mid ticket at the very end, I had a feedback questionnaire where I asked people like, what'd you love? What didn't you love? What did you feel was missing? So I got feedback from my students. This was the done is better than perfect method. Maybe the videos weren't as high quality as I wanted. Maybe some of them were literally like zoom recordings of me teaching to my webcam, but it was done is better than perfect. That was my mindset. I was like, I just want to get it up. This is what I launched in August, 2021. I know you, some of you might be like, whoa, that was like a two year gap. Well, I took like a year break <laughs> during 2019, 2020, like during 2020 was kind of crazy for all of us. And I was getting married. So I took some time off before coming back, build out my course. And then I did like one-on-one -on -one coaches. So whatever, you don't have to wait that long. What I'm saying, basically what I'm saying, you don't have to wait a year before doing an MMP journey. You could do this all within one year. And then tech wise, again, I did the wait list on Google forms. I didn't put this, but I emailed the wait list when the course was ready to launch. I emailed them through Flowdesk. So I started building my email list. Flowdesk was my host course hosting. I chose Thinkific payment processing, also Thinkific, which syncs with PayPal and or Stripe. That was the middle. Now this produces your FEP. Your FEP is your final evolving product. I made up this term because I really liked it and I couldn't find one that I liked that like went with the MVP, MMP. So we're doing FEP. This is the final product that can be sold continuously. After gathering student feedback, you're able to create a satisfactory and lovable product that you will continue to evolve over time. So this is finally when you've reached that like, yes, this is the course that I've been dreaming of. And with that course, you're probably going in once or twice a year to make tweaks, update, depending on student feedback, or maybe things you're teaching get outdated. So you have to tweak things, but it's like that ultimate final version. And my FEP was 
the final version of the modern influencer today has 10 modules of videos over 100 worksheets and downloadables high ticket it's like the biggest big kahuna high ticket item on my website so i think now it's 997 anybody who joins gets lifetime access and it's updated about once or twice a year i update it once or twice a year usually we have one big update where we literally watch every single video every worksheet is updated and made sure it's the most up-to-date. So we have one big update, but then halfway through the year, we also have a littler update, which is just like a general, okay, what has Instagram changed lately? Let's change these few things and tweak these few things. So we have about two updates every year. The tech for this one, we use evergreen for like evergreen sales. We use ever webinar. You're on webinar jam right now. It's like their sister companies, course hosting, Thinkific, payment processing, Thinkific, PayPal, Stripe. And then for email, we use active campaign. I don't recommend active campaign to start because it's very complex. So Flowdesk, if you're somebody who's just starting out at this point, we're using active campaign for our email list. For course hosting, I use Thinkific. The reason I picked Thinkific, this is like, even if they're sponsoring a minute of this webinar or not, I would recommend Thinkific. I picked them out when I first launched my courses over a year ago. The reason I picked them out is because, yeah, there's a lot of options out there, but my thought was from a student's perspective, what's the easiest way for somebody to take my course? I was enrolled in a lot of courses. I've taken a lot of courses. So I logged in as a student for a bunch of courses that I'm like signed up for. And I was like, okay, what's my favorite platform as a student? And Thinkific was my favorite platform from a student's perspective. So that was my priority. And then second priority was, okay, which one's the most easy to use? And Thinkific was the most easy to use. So it was perfect that from a student's perspective, Thinkific was my favorite. And then ease of use, Thinkific. Now, the next minute of this video will be sponsored by Thinkific because I genuinely love them. I use them for all of my courses. So let me just tell you about a limited time deal that they are running just for the people who are watching this YouTube video. For anybody who wants to try out Thinkific by using the link in my description, you get one month free of their start plan. They do have a free version of Thinkific that you can use, but you can get this $74 per month plan for free, test it out, have access to all of the features on the start plan so that you could really start building out your course. So you'll have this start plan for free. You'll also get their online course training bundle. So they have a bunch of bundles of uh, online courses to help course creators better create and sell their products. There's the online education business masterclass, how to price your course, build your content empire, and so much more. And a lot of these courses are step-by-step -step instruction for how to have a successful online course. So you'll have access to their training bundle. On top of that, you'll also have 100 plus hours access to their Thinkific summits. These are like workshop bundle videos from course creator experts. They come do workshops with Thinkifics and some students and those are recorded. You'll have over a hundred hours of these workshops to watch as many times as you need their replays. So you could go watch those now to hear from the experts of having a successful course. And then finally, you'll get over a thousand dollars in software savings. So they have a bunch of savings, discount codes, tools, and softwares at a discounted price that you can use when you create a Thinkific account. So these are all the things that you'll get by joining Thinkific, testing it out, seeing if it works for you. I'm not saying it's going to work for everyone, but I loved it for my business. And I just want to present this as an option for anybody who wants to test it out. I'll leave the link in the description down below. All of those things that you'll be getting through that link specifically is saving you over a thousand dollars in value. So it's definitely worth trying for free for the next 30 days. Use the link below and let's move on. Hi. <laughs> so we talked about how I created each of these, but how can you create each of these and how do you create your course? You. Yeah. <laughs> so let's build out your course outline. Ideally, you want to create a course that is simple to follow, A to Z format, and valuable to your audience. I love the A to Z format because it's like you get to follow it step by step from beginner to expert. But how do you actually build that out? Like, how do you get everything in here in your brain onto a course and communicated to students in a cohesive way? I think that's the hardest part a lot of people struggle with. And First thing is to let your audience design the course with you. Then 
You can do a sticky note brain dump. This was one of the best things that I had ever done. And get organized from the very beginning. I'm going to talk about each of these three things a little bit further. So first, let your audience design the course with you. Go to your Instagram stories and put these two slides on your stories. The first slide says, have you ever bought a course on insert your course topic and then do a poll yes or no. The next slide ask if yes, what did you feel that course was lacking or missing? What did you wish that it had? I did this when I was building out the, I think the third version, my FEP. So I did my MVP and then I did my MMP. I asked, okay, who's bought an Instagram course before? If you have, what was awesome about it? What did you not like about it? What was missing from it? And my audience gave me feedback. They were the ones that created my course outline because they told me, I wish it had an in-depth explanation of the algorithm. I wish it told me the legal side of being an influencer, how to set up your business legally, how to set your pricing, how to write contracts for brand collaborations. Like they told me everything that was missing in other courses. And I was able to craft like the best course ever because of my audience, not because oh, I'm so cool. Like, no, I heard their needs and created answers for it. If you don't currently have an audience, then what you can do is just go to TikTok, make a video, say, if you're somebody who's bought a course on da, 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 I want to hear from you. What did you love about the course? What did you hate about it? What did you feel it was missing? I'm creating a course on da, 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 da. Would love to hear your feedback in the comments. Boom, done. Create a TikTok, let it go over there a few times, put it on Instagram reels, put it on YouTube shorts and let that roll. Now for part two of how you can create the course, do a sticky note brain dump. I cannot emphasize this enough. Even if you're like, Millie, I want to skip this step. Don't skip this step, please. You want to get everything out of your head and onto paper. Write down everything that you want to teach on an individual sticky note. So every topic, every strategy, every, every step, put it on individual sticky notes. Once your table is a complete mess and disaster, you're going to organize the sticky notes and be like, oh, okay, all of these kind of relate, all of these kind of relate, and all of these kind of relate. So just kind of like organize them. And that will give you your course format. I did this. Here's like pictures of literally my sticky notes. And it was so amazing because you're able to like move them around and be like, oh, that one doesn't go there. That should go here. This one should go here. It was just this really easily digestible hands-on approach that I recommend everybody do when wanting to build out an online course. An example. So here's just like a brain dump of random ideas random. Here's Instagram account settings. Like this is how to grow on Instagram and land brand collaborations, right? So these are just all the random things that I need to teach. They're not in any specific order. Once I have my brain dump, I'm going to organize them. See, now they're rearranged A to Z. Okay. Well, first step, people need to know the algorithm before you even do anything on Instagram. You need to understand how it works. And the next Let's talk about the purpose of each feature. Before you create content for that feature, you need to know what the purpose of it is. Your Instagram account settings, all the things. So I arranged it A to Z where the result would be, okay, they grown on Instagram and they're making a consistent income. How do they get from A to Z? And then from there, I categorized them. So as you can see the top row, this is kind of beginner steps. So like the basics, let's start with the basics. These are what you need to do. Module two, the second row, this is more intermediate. It's like, okay, now that you have your foundation set, let's start creating content and know how to come up with content and create a content calendar. So module two is more intermediate. And then module three, this is advanced how to grow on Instagram, the actual strategies, landing collabs, all the things. Obviously I had like a hundred plus sticky notes because obviously how to grow on Instagram, there's a bunch of other sticky notes that describe that one thing. So this is just a general overview of how you can implement that. And then get organized from the beginning. I use Google Drive to get organized from the beginning. At the end, if you want me to like do a screen share and show this a little bit more in depth, just let me know during the Q&A and I can show you any screen share you want. But top picture shows how I put folders for each module. When you open a module folder inside of it, is more folders. <laughs> so I have a folder for the downloadables that I created, a folder for the scripts that I wrote and a downloadable for the slide. So like you're seeing this slideshow right now, I had the slide saved. When you open a scripts folder, all of my scripts are separated by lesson 
in a Google Doc. So module three, lesson one is getting comfortable in front of the camera. And then I brain dumped all the tips that I knew for getting comfortable in front of the camera. And then the next script was photo tips. I brain dumped all the photo tips that I knew. So that was how I organized my ideas and the sticky notes once the sticky notes were organized. Let's talk about how much to charge. When you're figuring out how much to charge, first step is to do market research. What do similar courses cost? When one of my students was figuring out how much to charge for her fitness coaching, one, you start with market research. So she was looking at all these other fitness coaches and she was seeing how much they charge. But something that she also had to keep in mind was this was her first year as a certified trainer. And the courses she was comparing herself to or pricing to were people who have been in the industry for 10 plus years. Some Someone was even, I think, 20 years in the industry. So obviously there's going to be a price difference because there are different levels of expertise and experience. That's just, it makes sense her first year being certified versus somebody who has been in the game for 10 plus years. So when you do market research, just make sure you're not only analyzing, okay, what do these courses cost, but who's the course host, who's teaching it, what's inside the course and kind of weighing and leveling everything that way. I don't pick a price until I'm done creating the course. So my MVP, I didn't really pick a price until I had it outlined. MMP, I didn't pick a price until I had it done. And M FEP, I didn't pick a price until I had it done because I wanted to know like, this is so much value. How much would somebody pay for all of this? Next, I recommend your MVP being the lowest price. It's always easier to charge lower than you think in the beginning. And I'm not saying charge less than what you deserve. I'm not saying that at all, but it's a safer gamble to charge less in the beginning because it's always easier to bring your prices up in the future as opposed to down. For example, if I launched my original MVP at $500 and I only got like five sales and like, which isn't bad, but like I got five sales, but my goal was maybe 50, right? I was like, okay, why didn't I hit my 50 goal? I realized, okay, maybe I priced it too high. So then the next time I launch, I launch it at 297. The five people who enrolled the first time are going to say, Hey, give me a refund for at least $300 because, or $200 because I paid 500 for this. And now you're selling it for 297 or 300. What's going on? So that's why I say it's always easier to start lower. And then as the evolution of your course grows, bring the price up until you're at a price that you're solid with, happy with. You're like, yes, that's the that's the key price. We're leaving it there for forever. And then finally, there's no right or wrong answer here. Only you can truly define what your value is and the value your course is offering. You need to listen to your gut, follow your gut and set that price that way. Finally, let's talk about how to have a successful course launch and make money with your course launch. First thing, create a wait list way, 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 way before you launch. As soon as you start working on your course, maybe you've validated the topic. Okay. As soon as you validate the course topic and you know, you're going to create a course on it, make a wait list, go to Google forms. It is free. Say, get on my wait list for Christmas light display course. Right. And then have somebody's put their name, email done put it in your link in bio, put a call to action saying, get on my Christmas light display course wait list. Have that in your bio for however long it takes for you to create the course. Maybe it's a few weeks, maybe it's a few months. Keep it in your bio for as long as possible because you're building warm leads of people who are willing to buy that specific thing from you. And when you do launch your course, those are the people that you email and those are the people that will buy from you. So create a wait list before you start creating your course. Next is you're going to follow my six week launch plan. So this is the, but basically this is the plan that my team and I followed. The launch strategy we did was a webinar format where you teach a free masterclass like this, like this one. Hi, this is a free one hour masterclass. It relates to your course. And then at the end, you sell your course to the attendees. Now I don't have anything to sell to you at the end. I'm not pushing a course, but if I did have a course to sell to you at the end of this, it would be like, this is how you create and sell. This is how you have a 
course that has a six figure course launch, you know? So that would be the course that I would sell to you at the end of this webinar because it goes hand in hand. The key here is to create a webinar that gives and offers a specific transformation and result alone. So somebody could take that webinar and see tangible results. They could walk away from it being like, whoa, I learned a lot. They never had to buy your course, but they walked away feeling, dang, that was one of the best webinars I ever took. So that like, whether they buy from you or not, they're like, yes, that's somebody I want to follow because they're knowledgeable. And that's more valuable than getting a sale. So one of the webinars that I have is how to grow and monetize on Instagram, get your first 10,000 followers and a thousand dollars in less than a hundred days. It teaches a 100, 100 day Instagram roadmap strategy. And then at the end of that webinar, sell the modern influencer. I try to get people to sign up for the modern influencer to grow on Instagram, become full-time influencer, make money with collabs, affiliate marketing, digital product sales, merch, all the things. And that's my transition. In the file that I'm sharing right now, it's going to go over all everything that you need to have done for your six week launch plan. So what sort of content do you need to have created before you launch? Get that done first. That'll probably take you about six weeks to create all that. And then on the right hand side, you can see calendar wise when my team published each of those things. So for further explanation of like, okay, what goes into a nurture email? What goes into a webinar invite? What does this thing mean? What does this thing mean? Download the file because at the bottom of the file, there is a link to a video that explains your six week launch plan. It explains it much better than how I can in this webinar. I know we're limited on time. So I wanted to make sure we still had, or you still had a resource that explained all of these things and what to put in each of these things. So like, what do you put in a nurture email? What the heck is a nurture email? Obviously that's like, okay, that makes no sense, Melly. but download the file at the very end of it. It'll have a full explanation in a video format. Now let's make sales. Three ways to guarantee sales is to offer pre-sales. This is so underutilized, but let's say you're going to launch your course in two months. And so what you're going to do is say, hey, you can pre-order my course. It's going to be live in 60 days, but you can get it at a beta price right now. And that way people basically pay you for the work that you're about to do. You get 10 people to sign up as like a beta students. They get the beta price, which is like the lower ticket item. You have money before you even launched the course. So that's a way to guarantee sales. You can create exclusivity, basically saying, hey, I'm only launching or open cart is for seven days and there's 10 spots available. Who's in, right? So creating that exclusivity will help somebody buy. Also sign up bonuses. This was so helpful for me to hit my goals during course launch. And that's for like the first people or anybody who joins today will get this. Anybody who signs up during the weekend will get this. A sign up bonus that worked really well for me was offering Instagram audits. And then another sign up bonus that worked really well for me was offering two hour group coaching call. So I did hey, anybody who joins this weekend, you're going to get a two hour group coaching call with Millie, open Q&A, ask her anything. So those were the sign up bonuses that I offered that helped increase sales dramatically. Can you show your Google Drive in more detail? Yes, let me do a quick screen share. This is my drive. So here's my, like all the files that I have for my courses. I have my email list courses here, Instagram courses here, and my reels courses here. So inside of the Instagram course, I have the outline, which is like overall everything. Graphics. So if I want to highlight graphics, in feed posts, stories, that goes there. And then I have like an update tracker where every year we track all of the updates, like 2019 version, 2020, 21, 2022, 2023. So we have all of the updates tracked there. Course outline. This is all of it. So module zero through eight. Plus there's like a bonus module, but it didn't need any scripting. So it's not seen here inside of the modules. We have downloadables, scripts, slides. I'm mostly in the scripts section and this is where like I script everything out. So each lesson from a sticky note was where I brain dumped everything. And then I turned these into slideshows. I also have my course outline. This is the overall outline. So this, when you like click, oh, module zero, it links you to the Google Drive lesson. This one, the algorithm, it links you to the algorithm script. So all of those, this is like the overall outline, they're linked somewhere here. So I could have it at an overview or I could go in and 
get more complicated with it. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you around social media. Okay. Bye.